guys are phenomenal. AJ Styles, and you're watching Bretto Live. What is going on guys, Brito Live back with another video. Today it's the Week in Review episode 28 setup video where I go over Raw and SmackDown. You guys know the whole deal here, Raw and SmackDown setup style, talk about it, give my thoughts, give you the reactions, the matches, what I thought about the show. Raw wasn't bad. The first two hours of the show, in my opinion, were super boring. The last hour and the like that, getting closer to the end of the show, we had some banger matches, but everything else, I was like, eh, okay, he won, okay, eh, was bad, okay. So yeah, I'm gonna, we're gonna get into it, and let's do it. This was good. Seth Rollins, Eric Rowan, Falls Count Anywhere match. No disqualification, Falls Count Anywhere, it could go in the parking lot, it could go up the ramp, it could be out of the ring, anything goes in this match. Seth Rollins had such a good idea. He brought Eric Rowan backstage, he, he, he lured him backstage, and then he somehow, he, he got him down, he put him under a, um, a, well, a forklift. He put him under a forklift with a pallet on it, and he's, he, he gets a guy, he's like, who the, who the heck knows how to work this thing? And then um, he, he asks the guy to lower it, and he lo lowers it on Eric Rowan, and then he pins Eric Rowan. They've done that the before with the big show, I think. Could be wrong, but I know they've done that before. I thought it was really cool. And yeah, the, just an interesting way to pin somebody. And then, I don't have the forklift, obviously, but you guys could see it. A forklift, you know, going under there, and then him standing on the pallet. That's how it was. It was awesome. Great match by those two. Moving over here is Ricochet versus Drew McIntyre. I didn't really like this match. I mean, it was good, but it was basically one-sided the entire time. Drew McIntyre was basically winning literally almost the entire time. The reason I think they're doing this is to show that Team Flair is stronger than Team Hogan, obviously, but when Crown Jewel comes, I think that, um, well, stay tuned for the predictions coming soon. I'm not going to, uh, well, they are already out because this is going on a Saturday, but I'm filming this on a Tuesday, so yeah. Crown Jewel Predictions are already out. Check them out if you haven't already. But yeah, um, of course, they're hyping up Team um, Team Flair here because obviously they have the stronger men. Uh, yeah, it was all one-sided. Drew McIntyre was dominating Ricochet out of nowhere. Ricochet's about to win. Randy Orton out of nowhere. Wicked RKO. Turned Ricochet inside out, and then that was a disqualification, and then, yeah, Ricochet won, but he didn't really win. So yes, guys, uh, moving over here, it was AJ Styles versus Humberto Carrillo in a one-on-one -on -one match. Not a bad match. Of course, they're hyping up Humberto, uh, uh, Humberto Carrillo. He was um, in a match last week. Pretty decent match. Another decent match this week by him and AJ Styles. Uh, AJ Styles did pick up the victory. Of course, the current United States champion. And then after the match, AJ Styles goes in with a handshake. And then AJ Styles like wipes his hair and as Humberto goes to shake his hand. And then it, it got an all-out brawl. And then it was a triple. It was three on one. And here come the Street Profits. Street Profits, of course, I don't have figures of them. Although, if I did, I would set something up. But uh, yes, they did help out Humberto, Humberto Carrillo because they do have a rivalry with Luke Gallows and uh, Carl Anderson and the entire OC. So, yeah, very interesting over there. But again, not my favorite part of the show. It, yeah, it just, I don't know, it's missing something. Moving over here, Andrade versus Sin Cara yet again. But this time, Sin Cara had, I think her name was Carolina. Carolina or something out in out in her corner to match Selena Vega, which Andrade always has in, in his corner. It was a one-on-one. -on -one. Sin Cara still lost with a cheat from Andrade. He had his feet up on the rope for leverage to get the one, two, three on Sin Cara. But yeah, not my favorite match of the night either. I mean, it's kind of disappointing. Moving over here, again, uh, just another match where I'm just like, eh, it was okay. Charlotte Natalia versus the Iconics. And obviously, Charlotte Natalia did pick up the victory. It was so easy work. Like, uh, Natalia locked in the sharpshooter, tap out, and then uh, Charlotte out of nowhere with a wicked spear to one of the Iconics. And yeah, then, yeah, it was a tap out. Natalia gets the victory for the team. Moving over here, our truth versus Buddy Murphy. Buddy over he dominated our truth our truth was distracted by the 24 7 people running around the ring and yeah he lost the match with a wicked knee to the face and he never got the 24 7 title either uh yeah not, again not my favorite part of the show uh, moving over here becky lynch um versus um kairi sane in one-on-one -on -one match first match of the night not bad and before this match actually the kabuki warriors turned on Paige by spraying the green mist in her face so yeah they don't want Paige anymore i guess um yeah so whatever i guess they got rid of Paige. um uh, yeah, obviously heels now. And then uh, Becky Lynch did pick up the victory on Kyrie Sane and Asuka. The odds were against her, but she did still pick up the victory. As you guys know, not the biggest fan of Alexa Bliss. I mean, not Alexa Bliss, uh, Becky Lynch. But uh, yeah, it's whatever. She did pick up the victory against um, 
uh, Kairi Sane, and it was a decent match. Again, first match of the show. And the last thing, the King's Court, or should I say the Divorce Court, with Jerry the King Lawler hosting it. Sort of like a Miz TV, just a Jerry the King Lawler's kind of addition. Uh, moving on, it was Lana and Rusev. It was, a, it was just a big promo here. And the main thing about the promo was Lana said Bobby Lashley told Lana that Rusev cheated on her which is insane. That's the main reason why Lana is with Bobby Lashley. But why would Lana believe Bobby Lashley? That's insane to me. I don't understand it fully yet, but that promo did reveal a lot. Uh, yeah, that promo was like getting real heated, man. I really felt a lot in that promo, even though I know it's all scripted, but I did feel a lot in that promo. It felt pretty good uh, to watch the entire thing. Thought it was a really good promo. And then in the end, Bobby Lashley did come out and Lana even said, I don't need you out there. I need to do this by myself. Bobby Lashley did come out and then it was a double beat down on Rusev. Even though Rusev had the upper hand for most of the beatdown, but then Bobby Lashley low blow, and then Lana as well with the distraction with the kendo stick. But yeah, yeah, this is getting a little more. This is getting confusing and con more, more and more confusing every week. Uh, but yeah, they just need to come out and just say why. I, I mean, I still barely understand it. Like Lana's like, yeah, I just don't want to have a baby, and Rusev wanted to have a baby. It was, it was weird, but it's whatever. Yeah, not a bad promo in the end. Uh, again, uh, Lashley, Lana, and Rusev in a promo in the end, not half bad. Okay, guys, that was raw. I will make sure to rate it at the end for you guys. Let's get into SmackDown. SmackDown Live was getting taken over by NXT. What an amazing show. NXT was taking over SmackDown. Yes, you guys heard me right. Without further ado, we're going to get right into it. Just in case you guys didn't see SmackDown, you guys are like, wait, SmackDown took over, I mean, NXT took over SmackDown? Heck yeah. We're going to get into it. Starting off at the beginning of the show, Brock Lesnar, Paul Heyman coming out doing their classic little promo here. Paul Heyman, Brock Lesnar. Basically, the entire promo revolved around Rey Mysterio attacking Brock Lesnar after Brock Lesnar beat Cain Velasquez at the Crown Jewel. So, yes. I so after they uh, Paul Heyman did like a bunch of different replays on replays on the Titan Tron, and then after all of that, Paul Heyman said, "We quit SmackDown. We are going to Raw. Nobody is going to stop my beast Brock Lesnar because Rey Mysterio is on Raw. So they're going to go hunt down Rey Mysterio on Monday probably and take him out." Paul Heyman's like, "Who the heck is going to stop Brock Lesnar? He's a beast. He's a conqueror, the reigning and defending undisputed heavyweight champion of the world." Nobody's going to stop him, so they quit. Again, quote-unquote, quit SmackDown, and they're going to Raw to find and hunt down Rey Mysterio. Moving over here, it was the start of the raid of NXT. It was Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose versus Rita Ripley and Tegan Knox in a tag team match. Tegan Knox and Rita Ripley absolutely dominated Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose. Absolutely dominated. And then before this match, Bianca Belair actually attacked uh, Dana Brooke and Carmella backstage, which was absolutely awesome. Again, NXT was taking over tonight. Moving over here, it was Nikki Cross versus Bayley for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh, later these past weeks on SmackDown, Nikki Cross, I forgot how she did it, but somehow she got a SmackDown Live ta um, World Championship opportunity. So, yeah, Bayley, Nikki Cross. Bayley did pick up the victory with a little help from Sasha Banks, but then after the match, Shayna Baszler, man. Like, what is going on? I think since they're bringing all these NXT guys, I think they're building up for Survivor Series. They want to get some uh, publicity to Wednesday nights on the USA Network for NXT, which I totally understand because NXT is awesome. But yes, Shayna Baszler takes out absolutely everybody, takes out Bayley, takes out Sasha Banks, takes out Nikki Cross, and she stands tall with the NXT Championship after Bayley beat Nikki Cross. Uh, after the fact, yeah, after Nikki Cross uh, got picked up the loss by Bailey. Uh, moving over here, it was Tommaso Ciampa versus The Miz. So it was Miz TV. It was supposed to be Bray Wyatt, but I think he got stuck in Saudi Arabia because some sort of like plane problems or something like that. So Bray Wyatt wasn't able to get interviewed, which I'm so sad about because I wanted to see him. But yeah, yeah even better, we got Tommaso Ciampa. So Miz is like, I'm going to interview myself. Here comes Tommaso Ciampa, the black heart. Here he comes. They have a match. Uh, of course, the promo leads to a match. Tommaso Ciampa, Miz, amazing match. Love Tommaso Ciampa, and especially up against the Miz. It was really good. Tommaso Ciampa did pick up the victory against the Miz, which was awesome. Basically, NXT the entire night was reigning, 
uh, just standing on top. Moving over here, Sami Zayn was backstage talking trash about all the NXT superstars that have been making their debut tonight here on the SmackDown Live show. And then right behind him, Matt Riddle and Keith Lee right behind him as he's talking all this trash. Sami Zayn tries to run away. They um, they follow him out to the ring. Sami Zayn gets laid out by Keith Lee and Adam Cole. Absolutely awesome. Again, guys, NXT really, oh, look at this. Adam Cole. Adam Cole. Res he, so Daniel Bryan's backstage. Daniel Bryan's like, I want a match tonight, Triple H. And Triple H is like, against me? No. Against Shawn Michaels? No. It's going to be against Adam Cole for the NXT Championship. And it happened. Amazing matchup between these two men. Amazing ending. Great moves from Adam Cole. Great moves from Daniel Bryan. Had an amazing match. It's amazing to see Adam Cole on SmackDown. Especially, I could put this brand new figure on the Week in Review setups, which is awesome. One on one, Adam Cole, Daniel Bryan. Amazing match. Adam Cole did pick up the victory, retained his NXT championship. And then all the NXT superstars st stood up on top with Triple H and Shawn Michaels in the ring at the end, which was freaking awesome. Okay, guys, that was the Week in Review. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely let me know. What was better this week, either SmackDown or Raw? I definitely have to go with SmackDown. I thought SmackDown was amazing. I thought the Crown Jewel wasn't half bad. I did not do a Crown Jewel prediction, I mean, a reaction uh, and thoughts and results video. But, um, yeah, I did do a week interview, so I really hope you guys enjoyed that. Look out for the um, Ringside Fest vlogs and all that different stuff coming to the YouTube channel very, very soon. And this has been this awesome video of the week interview. SmackDown, I would give a solid 9 out of 10. I thought it was amazing. I thought SmackDown was really good, man. I love seeing all this NXT talent. I thought Raw, I'd give it Raw a solid 7. Thought it wasn't half bad. But yes, guys, this has been the Week in Review. Really hope you guys enjoyed. Bredo Live is out.